On February 22, 2024, the time had come. After more than 50 years of waiting, the moon finally received a visit from NASA again. But although the Odysseus space probe ultimately touched down on the surface of our constant companion as planned, the mission was anything but smooth. Quite the opposite, in fact. If you like, the first commercial lunar probe probably took the phrase break a leg a little too seriously and immediately tipped over on its side due to a buckled landing leg. Nevertheless, Odysseus was able to take some pictures of our natural satellite during its brief trip to the moon, which is why its deployment was celebrated as a historic success in retrospect. We all know Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, but have you ever heard of Harrison Schmidt and Eugene Cernan? While the astronauts of the Apollo 11 mission are known to be the first humans in history to set foot on another celestial body, Cernan and Schmidt were the first Earthlings to get up close and personal with the surface of the moon on December 14, 1972. And although the USA and China are currently engaged in something like the Space Race 2.0, working intensively on a return to the satellite, we should not forget that NASA has not completed a soft, or in other words, unmanned moon landing in all these years. In fact, in the meantime, only a handful of probes have actually achieved this, such as the Chinese Chang'e lander, the Indian probe Chandrayaan-3, or the Japanese Slim lander, even though the latter touched down upside down on the lunar surface. But in order to finally throw its own hat back into the unmanned moon landing ring, NASA is relying on the friendly support of commercial partners. Unfortunately, however, the launch of the Peregrine space capsule, built by the U.S. company Astrobiotics in January last year, was ill-fated. So much so that the mission had to be aborted shortly after the launch due to a fuel leak and other technical problems. But only a short time later, on February 15th, 2024 to be precise, the hour of Odysseus had come, which this time was supposed to do everything better. The development of the two-ton, four-meter-high lunar visitor was the work of the space travel company Intuitive Machines. And after Odysseus left Earth aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 launch vehicle, everything actually went according to plan. Equipped with scientific instruments from NASA and private providers, ODI, as the probe was nicknamed, was not supposed to reinvent the lunar wheel, but rather help prepare for the manned Artemis mission and future commercial space travel. The landing site chosen by the mission controllers was once again the Malapert crater near the South Pole. And, as befits a spacecraft in 2024, Odysseus took several selfies on the way there, or more precisely, panoramic shots showing parts of the probe and its blue home planet. How Odysseus Broke His Leg But then, on February 22nd, the much-anticipated D-Day arrived. But in the end, Steve Altimus, CEO of Intuitive Machines, had no choice but to announce that Odysseus had not landed upright on the moon as hoped, but was lying on its surface at a slight angle. What caused this was not yet clear at the time of the press conference, and in fact, the company had initially announced via X that Odysseus had come to a standstill upright and had already begun the first data transmission. And NASA Administrator Bill Nelson also initially proudly commented that the USA had now successfully returned to the moon for the first time in just over half a century. But if we look at it very closely, the Odysseus mission was not without its problems even before the unexpected rollover. On February 21st, the probe had ignited its engines to swing into a low lunar orbit. The aforementioned engines ran on liquid methane and oxygen and were essential for the braking maneuvers. But apparently the sensors, which were also essential for the landing approach, did not work correctly. As a result, the ground team decided to switch to a system developed by NASA. Specifically, these were the sensors of the navigation Doppler LiDAR, a laser-based component that was actually only on board for test purposes due to its experimental nature. The system was designed to analyze the distance to the ground and the nature of the landing site using laser beams and their reflections from the ground. And so it came about that Odysseus first had to do a lap of honor around the moon to give the LiDAR system enough time to prepare. As mentioned, the subsequent landing should be successful, but literally by hook or by crook. 
While the reason for the tilted probe could only be speculated on at first, the first camera images finally shed more light on the situation. According to these images, Odysseus's self-portraits showed that the probe was tilted about 30 degrees to the side on the lunar surface because one of its landing legs was bent. The broken probe leg was most likely due to an excessively high descent speed. Odysseus was actually supposed to approach the surface at a speed of one meter per second. But the problems with the navigation system meant that it descended three times faster instead. At the same time, the probe also drifted sideways, which is why it finally did not touch down quite vertically and much harder than planned on the moon. Aside from that, however, there was also good news to report. Although Odi literally ran into trouble, its scientific instruments largely worked as desired. Fortunately, the payloads that were supposed to collect data after landing were not on the side of the probe facing the moon. However, the incident did not pass without a trace for all components, and the main antenna, designed for broadband transmissions, was misaligned by the tip-over. As a result, the data could initially only be transmitted via the less powerful low-gain antenna which is why the first camera images were a little delayed at the beginning. Fortunately, however, the experts managed to optimize the data transmission, and yet the period of suspense had only just begun. A Moonlit Night with Consequences What at first glance appears to be a photograph of the sun setting over the lunar horizon is in fact nothing less than a farewell photo of the moon. Odysseus's active phase was actually already over on the night of March 1, 2024, not due to another flip, but because of the dawning lunar night. The reason why the Intuitive Machine's ground team put the probe into hibernation is easy to explain. Without sunlight, the solar modules can no longer supply Odysseus with power. And yet, at that point in time, the experts still hoped that the probe would wake up after the two-week lunar night and continue its mission. After all, the Japanese Slim Lander had also managed to do this beforehand, but the rude awakening ultimately only occurred at the Earth-based ground stations. And the attempts to reactivate Odysseus at lunar noon, when the sun was particularly high above its location, failed. Unfortunately, the battery and electronic components could not withstand the bitter cold of the moonlit night, which saw temperatures fall below minus 100 degrees. With no signal from Odysseus received on Earth between March 20th and 23rd, Intuitive Machines officially declared the mission over. So what can be concluded about Odie's visit to the moon? In view of the broken leg, the sensor failure, and the data transmission problems, one might think that the mission was subsequently classified as a failure, but that is not the case. Quite the opposite. In fact, Odysseus's mission was celebrated as a historic success. After all, this was not only the first U.S. probe to land on the moon since the Apollo missions, it was also the first commercial space probe ever to get up close and personal with our Earth's constant companion. And without wanting to belittle this success, it's arguably undisputed that the week-long deployment of a damaged probe pales somewhat in comparison to a manned moon return. But when will that actually be? When will NASA finally bring people back to the moon as part of the Artemis program? Well, unfortunately, a little patience is still required in this regard. Originally, the first Artemis moon landing was planned for last year. But unfortunately, the targeted schedule has already had to be repeatedly postponed in the past. The last time this happened was in December, and Bill Nelson stated that improvements were still needed to the Orion crew capsule manufactured by Lockheed Martin. This is hardly surprising, given that cracks and material detachments occurred during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere during an unmanned test flight in 2022. And indeed, the Artemis astronauts are to complete a test run before they finally touch down on the lunar surface. In detail, the program includes a separate mission in which astronauts fly around the moon without actually landing on it. And so it happens that the manned return to the moon is further delayed and will not take place before the year 2027. And yet, if the Artemis program is implemented, Christina Koch will be the first woman to set foot on the moon, along with Reed Wiseman, Victor Glover, and Jeremy Hansen. And now you're welcome to click on the subscribe button. Just press the thumbs up and click subscribe so you never miss a new video from us again.
We'll see you soon.